a pleasant feast time learners. This is Sir Peter, your pre-calculus teacher. For this video lesson, we are still on week number two, circular function. For the third topic, at the end of this video lesson, we should be able to locate circular functions on the Cartesian plane. So the topic that we're going to discuss is about locating circular functions on the Cartesian plane. Are you ready? Let's start. Let's have a review about the unit circle. Recall that every measure of the angle in degree measure has a corresponding region measure. And every measure of this angle has a corresponding trigonometric point. So in statement, we say that the function P of theta or the function of the reference angle theta has a corresponding P with coordinates x, y. And this is referred to as the trigonometric point represented by this values. So it only means that for every function of theta, there is a corresponding function for the length of this sites. So let's have a review of the trigonometric point P with coordinates x, y. So the x value is referred to as the cosine of the angle, while the y value is referred to as the sine of the angle. We also have um, discussed in our previous topic that the tangent function can only be solved by dividing the sine function over the cosine function, which is y divided by x. And of course, the other three reciprocal functions, which are the secant, cosecant, and cotangent functions, can be obtained by getting the reciprocals of each. Let's proceed to locating circular functions on the Cartesian plane. So the signs of the coordinates of P of theta depends on the quadrant or axis where it terminates. So it is very important to know the sign of each circular function in every quadrant. So it is not necessary to memorize the whole table, but we need to know which signs does it function, that does each function um, do they belong. So we always take note that the signs, whatever the signs of their reciprocals, will also be the sign of their corresponding function. For example, if the sine function is positive, then its reciprocal, which is cosecant, is also positive. If it is negative, then cosecant will also follow. In the same way, when the cosine function is positive, the secant function will also be positive. And if the cosine function is negative, then the secant function will also be negative. Same rule will be followed for the tangent function and the cotangent function. So whatever will be their signs will be the same respectively. So here is the summary of all of the signs. Okay, so for the first quadrant, all six circular functions are positive meaning sine theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta are positive. The reason is the x and the y values are positive. For the second quadrant, we know that the coordinates of any trigonometric point will be a negative x and a positive y. So we have a sign which is negative, positive. So therefore, if we get the um, sine function, it is only the y value which is 
positive. So it's only the sine and its corresponding reciprocal function, which is cosecant, are positive. So sine only and its reciprocal. For quadrant T, e, we know that x here is negative and the y value is also negative for every trigonometric point P. So therefore, the sine is negative and the cosine, sorry, this is the cosine, which is negative, and this is the sine, which is negative also. But there is one function which is positive. It is the tangent function. Of course, it will follow that its cotangent function will also be positive. So in here, the sine, the cosecant, the secant, and the um, cosine are negative but only the tangent and the cotangent are positive. And lastly, for the fourth quadrant, we know that the trigonometric point P has coordinates X and then negative Y. So obviously, it's the cosine, which is our X value, which is positive. In the same way, it's the reciprocal, which is the secant function, will also be positive, meaning the sine function, the cosecant function, the tangent function, and the cotangent functions are negative. So remember this acronym. So in here, we have A. It means all of them are positive. And then two, we have S, in which the sine is positive. Then here is T, e, in which the tangent function is positive, and C, which is on the fourth quadrant, the cosine function is positive. So using this acronym, we, can, we could be able to memorize which of the functions are positive, and automatically their reciprocals will all be positive. So we form the word cast, okay? So here is the summary of the signs. Okay, do not forget the word C A S T starting from quadrant four. So it's already summarized. A means all, S means sign, the ratio is positive. For quadrant three, we have tangent, and for quadrant four, we have cosine function. Now, let us determine which quadrant does um, which P of theta like. So the given um, reference angle theta will be given. Let's start. Okay, let us recall everything. What if cosine theta is greater than zero and tangent theta is greater than zero? A greater than zero value meaning they are positive. So let's start with the cosine, which is the x value. So if the cosine is positive and tangent is our. So for the cosine function, so cosine is positive on quadrant one and quadrant four. What about the tangent function? The tangent function is also positive on the first quadrant and it's also positive on the third quadrant. A quadrant with the values x and y will now be the correct answer. Okay, so therefore, our theta belongs to quadrant one. So that is the technique. Let's have another example. What if sine theta is negative and cosine theta is positive? So it's greater than zero. So our x is sine theta, our y is theta, um, cosine theta. So in that example, sine is positive.
So in here, sine is negative on which quadrant? Quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So these are the values. Then where is cosine positive? It is on the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. And the intersection of the values x and y is here. So therefore, the correct answer is quadrant 4. Let's have the next example. Sorry. Potangent um, is um, negative and cosecant is positive. So in which quadrant is cotangent negative? So we have to look for the quadrant in which tangent is also negative. So tangent is negative in the second quadrant and tangent is also cotangent is also negative on the fourth quadrant. Now let's find where cosecant is positive. It's positive on the first quadrant, of course, because all of them are positive. And it's also positive for the second quadrant. So the intersection of the x and y is here. So therefore, our correct answer is quadrant 2. <clears throat> Let's have the next one. Cosine theta is um, negative and cosecant theta is negative. So which quadrant does cosine cos um, cosine theta becomes negative? So obviously it is on the second quadrant and on the third quadrant. What about cosecant theta? So we refer to the sine theta. Which quadrant is sine theta negative? Isn't it? It is on quadrant three and four. So since there is a common value for x and y here, so therefore quadrant three is the correct answer. Let's have another example. Tangent theta is positive and secant theta is positive. So we know that tangent theta is positive on which axis? I mean, which quadrant? Correct. It's quadrant one. And we also have quadrant three. And which, uh, for the secant function, which is also the reciprocal of sine, it's positive on the first quadrant and sine and secant are also positive on the what fourth quadrant. So meaning P of theta is located on the first quadrant. So here are the references used in this presentation. Did you learn something? So for we are still on week number two circular functions for our next video lesson. We will talk about getting the exact value of the circular function.